Hey, what's up guys? My name is Foryam and welcome to my new ranked series for Minecraft Dungeons. In this series, I rank everything for the game, from weapons and armor to enchantments and even DLCs. As Dungeons veteran with countless hours of playtime and of course after many requests, I thought this would be very useful for the Dungeons community. Today, I'm going to rank all 12 bosses in Minecraft Dungeons from both the mainland and all the DLCs from worst to best. The ranking will be based on different criteria like boss design, fight difficulty, entertainment value and more. This video will also give you a better perspective which bosses are in my opinion the most fun to fight against and yeah, maybe it can help you decide which DLCs you should get your hands on first. I already made a video where I rank all 6 DLCs from worst to best, so definitely make sure to check that one out as well. Alright guys, time to slay some bosses, let's get right to it. This video obviously contains spoilers for every single boss fight in Minecraft Dungeons from both the mainland and the DLCs, so if you don't want to see him, just click away. While ranking all bosses in this video, I also show them some mercy during the fights so you know exactly how they work. Alright, let's get right to it. The biggest loser of all, the Ancient Guardian of the Hidden Depths DLC, because I wasn't even able to get to this boss fight. No, Mojang, please seriously fix the fight, because I cannot even get through the gate to actually record this battle after 5 playthroughs of the DLC. In the past, I did enjoy the boss fight though, so let's go to the real top 12. On number 12, we have the Evoker, which can be found on the Pumpkin Pastures, one of the mainland missions. This one is, in my opinion, not really a boss. I mean, it is a mini boss, right? You can also fight these in different levels, but right here, it's actually serving as a boss at the end of the level. The reason why I put it on number 12 is because the fight isn't anything special. He goes down very quickly, especially if you add a gun of weakening to your battles. But seriously, this one doesn't drop very nice gear either. It's not challenging at all. I want wasn't entertained either, so yeah, there you have it. Next up, we have the Redstone Golem, which can be found in the Redstone Mines, also one of the mainland missions. Guys, don't get me wrong for putting this one on the 11th spot, because this one is actually a lot of fun to fight against, but it's just nothing special, just like um, the Evoker, because it's also a mini boss, which you can find in many different levels. So this one is pretty easy to take down, especially if you just run in circles around the lava pools. I think that's a very easy way to take him down with uh, some arrows, but of course, if you use a Gong of Weakness, you'll be able to take him down very quickly as well. Entertainment value of this one is pretty low, loot is also not really fantastic at this level, but it is definitely a great fight. On number 10, we have the Wretched Wraith, which was the boss for the Creeping Winter DLC. And the reason why I put it on 10 is because I really wasn't entertained at all. On my very first playthrough, I also didn't really feel like I was fighting a boss. I mean, I took him down so quick and there wasn't really any special music, no crazy effects. He sometimes shoots some of these balls of lightning and that looks pretty cool and all. You also glide on the ice, which is, in my opinion, one of the most fun things which you can do on the Creeping Winter DLC. But in general, I wasn't entertained entertained at all with this boss fight. It was too easy, the loot was pretty bad as well, so there you have it. Number 10. Next up, we have the Cauldron of the Soggy Swamp Mainland Mission. Guys, this one was actually a lot of fun and still pretty challenging on the highest Apocalypse Plus. And what I think is really funny is this blah, 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 blah sound effect which you hear all the time with all the slabs popping up around you. Well, it can be annoying as hell, but at the same time, I think this was a pretty challenging mission. The loot right here is also pretty good because you can get your hands on, for example, the Evocation Rope family as well as uh, the Harp Crossbow and the Lightning Harp Crossbow. But but um, at the same time, if you know how to take him down, he can go down pretty quickly. Once again, the entertainment value was pretty low in my opinion because we didn't have any special music. It didn't feel like an epic boss fight. It's just one of the first bosses in the entire game, so I think this also makes sense. I mean, it's a great boss to fight against and I really enjoy it still. But of course, we have way more interesting bosses coming up right now, so this one definitely deserved Nith spot. On number 8, we have the Jungle Abomination from the Jungle Awakens DLC. Boy, oh boy, this was a pretty challenging boss to take down as it has one of the largest HP pools of all bosses in the game. I mean, it can hit like a truck. It's also spawning in mobs, for example, the Leap Leaves, which can make your day really bad if they jump right on top of you. But the reason why I put it on 8 is because, I don't know, I didn't experience the same feeling which I also had when I was fighting, for example, the Arc Illager or the Redstone Monstrosity. I mean, getting thrown in the line 
lava or he get hit by those lasers felt really scary and I was always fearing for my death while with the jungle abomination you sometimes get tossed around by the leap leaves but in general this fight isn't extremely scary didn't really threaten my life. During my first playthroughs, I really enjoyed this one and the loot is also not that bad. This is definitely a worthy opponent for the End of the Jungle Awakens DLC, especially if you played on the highest Apocalypse Plus, but of course the ones which I'm going to showcase right now are simply getting better and better. On number 7 we have the Mushroom Monstrosity of the Secret Cow level which can be found also on the mainland. Boy oh boy, this is probably one of the most epic boss fights which you can do in Minecraft Dungeons on the highest Apocalypse Plus. I mean the HP pool of this guy is big and then the damage that he deals is also pretty scary. I mean he can two shot you if you have some pretty decent gear. This guy also spawns in Mushrooms which aid him in battle. They aren't very powerful and in my opinion are actually very helpful if you have a weapon with a high attack speed radiance so you'll be able to heal up yourself so you don't have to run away from his attacks the further you get away from the boss the higher the chances are that he's gonna start shooting those mushroom projectiles and they literally hit like a truck so guys please don't go too far away from him there are some tactics to take him down pretty easily of course i already made plenty of videos for that and yeah in general it's just a very fun battle which you can repeat many times if you want to speed running this bad boy can only take a minute if you have the right gear so he definitely deserved the seventh spot. Number 6, Ancient Guardian. Let's try it again, right? Hidden Depths DLC boss. I think this one was pretty fun, but at the same time wasn't too special. I mean, you do get that epic boss fight moment when you have this cutscene popping up with, of course, the boss. But then, in the end, the mines were too spectacular and the boss also doesn't deal a lot of damage. You can already negate the damage if you have a totem of shielding, for example. But in general, the beam that he shoots doesn't deal a lot of damage anyways. Even though I personally wasn't a huge fan of the Hidden Depths DLC, I still rated it pretty high on my DLC ranking video and also this boss fight because I just think the overall experience which you get when you fight this boss is pretty nice. I mean the path to the boss, the way how these levels are designed and of course also the music and the cutscene, I think they all add up to a pretty nice boss fight experience. Of course, the loot wasn't too bad either because you can get your hands on pretty crazy uniques right here, so the Ancient Guardian definitely deserved this spot. On number 5, we have the Redstone Monstrosity of the Fiery Forge Mainland Mission. One of my favorite missions because there is just so much to do right here. You can find plenty of secrets, but the Redstone Monstrosity itself is also a pretty tanky monster. It literally says it, Monstrosity. So this one also works pretty similar like the Mushroom Monstrosity, but the magma cubes it spawns in and then of course all the lava that surrounds you just adds up to the experience, making it even more challenging. If he manages to knock you in one of the lava pits, it's game over. Same counts for when you get swarmed by all those magma cubes. I think it's a pretty challenging fight and also the mechanics on how to defeat him are pretty interesting. One thing though that I don't really like is that um, the pistons which you use in order to deal extra damage to the boss don't really have a lot of effect on the highest apocalypse. Plus, you can increase the damage done by them by using a gong of weakening to weaken of course the boss even more, but in general it will be a lot easier to just take him down with your melee attacks. So yeah, in general, I really enjoyed this fight and I keep doing so every time when I play through this level. It's a pretty challenging one, so definitely be careful. On number 4 we have the Forgotten One from the Desert Temple, also one of the mainland missions. And you guys are probably wondering why 4M put this one on number 4. Well guys, I have a love-hate relationship with this guy. I mean, he did kill me on my Hardcore Survival series, right? He destroyed me right there and I wasn't prepared. Really, the Forgotten One is a boss fight which you don't expect. He doesn't have a lot of HP but at the same time it's just enough to be very annoying. Because every time when you think you're about to take him down, he just teleports away and spawns in even more of these vanguards. The vanguards with the shields and spears, oh boy, they are insanely annoying to take down. I definitely recommend you to use your bow and arrow to um, take away their shields and then continue to take down the forgotten one. The reason why this one also definitely deserves 4th spot is because of the element of surprise. This cannot be found on any other boss in the entire game except for the Arc Illager. So this one at random moments just disappears from your screen and then BAM there are 10 of them around you shooting their projectiles at the very same time. If some of them hit you it's a 100% guaranteed death for you so this one can be extremely scary. To counter this I definitely suggest you to keep moving around and stay behind the pillars if you are a little bit scared for his projectiles 
projectiles. So yeah, it's a really scary boss. Of course, also the loot which you can find right here is really nice. In general, the entertainment value for the Forgotten One is top tier. Next up, we have the Tempest Golem from the Howling Peaks DLC. I thought this one was a lot of fun to fight against as well. It was pretty challenging with his HP pool. It also has a lock that prevents you from taking it down pretty easily because all their bosses can be just nuked down instantly. This guy actually has a pretty interesting shield, which you're gonna have to disable by fighting a couple waves of mobs at the two pillars right in front of him. While you're doing this, he also hacks and slashes all the battlefield, dealing a lot of damage and also summons in lightning, which can make your day pretty bad as well. I really enjoyed the entire adventure all the way to the Tempest Golem. All the levels of the Howling Peaks DLC were really nice. But then, of course, if you get to this boss room, you definitely feel like you're going to fight a big guy. And that was exactly what happened. The expectations were definitely met in general. And of course, the music was also really nice in the background. Added to that, we can also find some pretty cool new weapons and armor right here. So this one definitely deserved third spot. On number two, oh boy, this one was so difficult to decide because I think these two actually both deserve first spot. And it's also kind of because they're both the final bosses, right? Anyways, second spot goes to the Arc Illager, the Heart of Ender, from the Obsidian Pinnacle mission, the final level pretty much from the mainland. So the Arc Illager was a pretty challenging fight. I mean, at the beginning, it wasn't very challenging. You have to fight the Arc Illager's casual form, which isn't very scary. He doesn't deal a lot of damage. He just spawns in some random pillagers with crossbows and that is pretty much it but after you take him down he actually transforms into the heart of ender one of the craziest and most scary bosses in the entire game because he deals so much damage if you accidentally get caught in the ender flames or the lasers which he shoots your hp will probably melt away in a couple milliseconds and you will lose lives very quickly I remember doing this boss for the very first time on the highest Apocalypse Plus. I can't remember how many times I saw the game over screen popping up until I realized that you can actually take him down pretty easily if you get your hands on a totem of shielding. That precious artifact pretty much turned the tables for this boss fight as you'll be able to block almost all the damage he deals. Be a little bit careful though by using the totem of shielding in the wrong position because sometimes you can actually get a laser inside the barrier and then you will also get destroyed. Anyways, this was a really challenging boss fight especially the heart of ender which is the second form or the second sage of this boss fight so yeah this is in general one of the most challenging things in minecraft dungeons definitely a lot of fun to continue with this one on the highest apocalypse plus try to beat it with a couple challenges it's gonna be a lot of fun also the path to the boss is pretty challenging i mean you definitely had that feeling that you were going to take down the final boss of the game it was very satisfying to take him down in the end and of course also the loot the reward which you get in the end are definitely worth it. But of course, only one can be on the first spot, right? The Vengeful Heart of Ender from the Echoing Void DLC. This DLC was so much fun to play through and the boss fight actually exceeded my expectations because it was so epic. I mean, we got 1,300 people watching at the very same time during the live stream when this one went live and boy, oh boy, that fight was so challenging as well. I have to be honest though, I think the Arc Illager's Heart of Ender form is a little bit more difficult to take down as it can surprise you with that insane one-shot damage. But I think the design of the Vengeful Heart of Ender, the entire fight, the whole experience around it is so much better. You get this intro cutscene and then of course also the outro after taking him down. Everything was so on point. You also have this epic background music while you're playing this guy. He also spawns in Endermites, try to suck you into the void and then also deals a lot of damage with those void mirrors. I think the entire experience was top notch. Even though it wasn't the most difficult boss fight, I think it fits very well in the Orb of Darkness storyline and of course puts a very good end to it as well. In addition to that, the replay value on this one is also pretty high because it is so much fun doing this boss fight every single time. The entire Broken Citadel in general was a lot of fun to play through. We had some pretty challenging new mobs, some epic loot dropping from the Obsidian chest and also of course a boss fight. For example, the beginning and the end, one of the most epic twin blades which you can get your hands on in Minecraft Dungeons. 
Alright, so guys, there you have it, my top 12 for all the bosses ranked from worst to best in Minecraft Dungeons. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, definitely make sure to hit that like button. It only takes a second and helps me out a lot. But of course, I am also very interested in what your top 12 or maybe even top 3 is because you probably all have different opinions. Guys, definitely make sure to leave it in the comments down below and also let me know which ranked video I should do next. Should I rank weapons, armor, or maybe artifacts first? Just let me know in the comments. Of course, my ranked video of all six DLCs can also be found in the top right of the screen, so definitely make sure to check it out. Guys, big thanks for watching once more. I'll see you very soon in the next video. Right now, though, it is 4am out. Time to work on my next project. Till next time. Peace.